Thanks so much for watching Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Jason Grenauer. You're looking live from Kennedy Space Center at Cape, Cape Canaveral, where the Artemis 1 rocket, as you can see, is still on the launch pad. NASA decided, decided to scrub that mission earlier this morning because of multiple complications. The mission is meant to serve as a test flight ahead of a 2024 launch that will take humans to the moon. Morgan Norwood reports on what went wrong and when NASA is going to try again. Just minutes after the launch window for Artemis 1's most powerful rocket in the world was set to open, NASA scrubbing the unmanned mission due to a series of complications. Launch Director Charlie Blackwell Thompson has called a scrub of the attempt of launch of Artemis 1. All morning crews have been scrambling to address a cascade of problems. First, lightning, which NASA says delayed the process of tanking, which includes filling the rocket's core stage with liquid oxygen and hydrogen followed by a leak in the hydrogen fuel line, then a crack in the inner tank. But it was an issue with an engine that caused NASA to scrub the launch altogether. We don't launch until it's right. Uh, they're taking an uh, opportunity while that vehicle is still fueled up uh, to work this problem, and they're going to work it. They'll get to the bottom of it. They'll get it fixed, and then we'll fly. The plan was for the Artemis 1 to carry the Orion capsule into orbit, go around the world once toward the moon, then loop around the moon before coming back to Earth. You can't test the heat shield in a lab. You've right. got to put it, and it's coming in hot. It's coming in fast. It's coming in 5,000 degrees. Once the rocket launches, the mission is expected to take roughly 40 days to complete before the Orion capsule returns to Earth. And by 2024, Americans could be going to the moon to stay. This mission being successful is a, a sign to the world and to the American people that, that we've been doing our best with, with your resources. And, and, and so thank you. We owe them that. And the next launch window is Friday, just after 12 noon. In the meantime, crews will be working to fix everything that was discovered today. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Now, there are two major parts to Artemis, the new mega rocket that will carry the Orion capsule into space. And then there's the capsule itself. The Orion spacecraft was built by Colorado-based Lockheed Martin to eventually return astronauts to the moon and then on to Mars. Humans haven't been to deep space and back in over 50 years with the Apollo program. That was really humanity's first taste at space exploration. And now through the Artemis program, you notice Artemis in Greek mythology is a twin sister of Apollo. Um, NASA plans this series of increasingly complex missions to build a sustained lunar presence on the moon. So the goal is not only to go there to visit, but to stay. Yeah, you heard her, to stay. Now, it seems like most recent space missions have some pieces or parts built right here in Colorado. Our state actually is home to the nation's second largest aerospace economy. More than 34,000 people are employed by Colorado aerospace companies. The Colorado Space Coalition's company directory includes more than 500 aerospace companies and suppliers. Nine of the nation's top aerospace contractors have significant operations here in Colorado. Colorado's aerospace companies develop products and systems for commercial, military, and government space organizations. And just one example is Sierra Space in Louisville. It's working on a new commercially owned space station called the Orbital Reef Project. It will be a place for research and industrial uses, and yes, even tourism. The ex-partner of former Aurora Police Chief Vanessa Wilson will be in court this afternoon. Robin Nasita is charged with falsely reporting that Aurora City Council member Danielle Jurinsky sexually abused her own son. Jurinsky filed a lawsuit against Nasita and the entire Arapahoe County hum Human Services Office. The State Department of Human Services is also looking into potential fraud and child safety concerns following the claims made against Nasita. A former Greenwood Village police officer accused of shooting and killing an Aurora teenager will also be in court for an arraignment this afternoon. Court documents say Adam Holen confronted a group of teens about their careless driving last November. He started shooting at 17-year-old Peyton Blitzstein, who later died. Blitzstein's family filed a wrongful death lawsuit earlier this month, saying Holen acted negligently when he started shooting. They also say the teen was acting in self-defense. 
Family and friends will meet in Greeley tonight to remember 22 year old Angie Vega. She was killed Friday night while closing up at NoCo Nutrition, where she worked. Police were called to the store just before 8 and were told Vega was missing and that the business had been broken into. Officers found blood in the store and Angie's car was missing. Her car was found a few hours later with her body inside. Your heart is just breaking because as a mother, and I have a 22 year old, I'm like, oh God. You know, you have all these worries and I couldn't imagine what her mom is going through. I couldn't even imagine what she was going through. Police arrested 24 year old Marcus Vallejo in connection to Angie's death. He's being held on murder and sex assault charges. Tonight's vigil for Angie starts at six outside of NoCo Nutrition. Her family is expected to speak at that vigil. Well, it was a violent weekend across the metro. This map shows where police responded to five different shootings in Denver and Aurora. Two people died and eight others were hurt. There have been no arrests. Now, one of those shootings happened in Denver's Sunnyside neighborhood. One man named Thomas Jimenez was killed. Three others were hurt, including two children. We spoke to Jimenez's sister, who believes the shooting happened when a house party got out of control. He wasn't a boy. He wasn't a... 20 years old. He was a 41 year old man who was living his life in, in his home, you know, doing what he thought was right to come out here. They took somebody that touched many lives that nobody can get back. Well, if you know anything about what happened, give Denver Police or Metro Denver Crime Stoppers a call. We expect to get more information from Adams County today about an intersection some neighbors say is dangerous. Neighbors shared this ring video with us showing drivers blowing through stop signs and speeding. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon spoke with one family pushing for changes to that road. Jacob Delgado has lots of reasons to be excited about the new school year. Because I can spend more time with my friends and then I can meet te new teachers. But there are some things. He really sucks. He wishes he didn't have to deal with. Mostly dangerous because sometimes I walk and then people don't even stop and they just go vroom. His school, Coronado Hills Elementary, is right by where he lives, near the corner of Franklin and Nueva Vista streets. They love school. They're just <laughs> always scared when they walk home. <laughs> Carla is Jacob's mom, who wants to see speed humps on these streets. On the other side of 88, they have numerous speed humps. It's a huge help. Her doorbell camera shows people speeding and running the stop sign outside their home. They'll get here and not even stop. They'll just keep going. As long as they can see the car not coming, they'll keep going. But they're looking for cars, they're not looking for kids. One of the cameras on their neighbor's home <laughs> caught a hit and run too. They also sent us this picture they say is a rollover crash from Friday night. We've seen two rollover accidents right here in this intersection right here in a 25 mile hour zone. They'll still get their cars flipped over. The parents say they've been trying for years to get something done about it. I am extremely fearful that a kid is going to get hit. Someone's going to get hit and it's going to be bad, especially how fast they speed through here and flip around these corners. And that's what I want to prevent. I hope they know that there's kids on this road and there's a school and you're not supposed to be speeding around here and there's a stop sign for a reason. Determined to make their streets safer with their kids in mind. Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. We have some good news for people who drive the Central 70 project. A four mile stretch is back open after being closed all weekend. CDOT had to close westbound I-70 between I-270 and Brighton to remove barriers before and in the tunnel. CDOT also restriped the lanes. This was the last major milestone of the project, so we asked what will drivers see next? Of course, we have to do some final punch list items, have to open the express lanes for tolling. Um, so those are some ad additional adjustments. Of course, once uh, the express lanes do open for tolling, that'll be like the final, final milestone. Um, but right now, as you know it, I-70 is done. Done, finally. Tolling on the new express lanes will start next year, and a park on top of the tunnel should open in the next few months. 
Also in transportation news, RTD still needs to fill about 200 bus driver positions and 90 mechanic positions. So it's holding a job fair this week and is offering $4,000 hiring bonuses. It's happening until 2 at RTD's building off of Colfax in Aurora. The hiring fair is also tomorrow and Wednesday from 10 to 2. You can apply online or at the hiring fair itself. And you have three more days to ride RTD for free. State lawmakers created the Zero Fare for Better Air initiative for the month of August. It's supposed to encourage people to ride public transit and improve Colorado's air quality. Regular RTD fares start on Thursday, September 1st. Well, the Broncos preseason is over. Coming up, the team is starting to finalize their roster and are already making roster moves. Plus, U.S. officials are investigating national security concerns following the FBI search of former President Donald Trump's home.